Living Resilience exists to offer transformative support and resources to the collapse-aware and collapse-acceptant communities around the world. Our sole purpose is to curate and offer coaching, support groups, courses, and events that assist people in expanding their core skills, competencies, and capacities for facing a troubled, predicament-laden, yet still ineffably miraculous world. Hey there. Welcome to the newest course uh, in 2023, available here in Living Resilience. And uh, this is a particularly um, compelling topic for me. It's it's just always been interesting since uh, finding out in my middle teen years about the whole notion of shadow in the human experience, both individual and collective shadow behavior, shadow dynamics. I'd be willing to say that uh, we are living in times that are entirely shadow driven around the world. Um, kind of a bold statement, but I, I, I'm looking forward to finding somebody who can talk me down from that particular perspective. I'd like to just invite you to uh, in, sign up and uh, and be a part of this course, <clears throat> even though here we are in March of 2023, we're just opening it up. Um, this is the uh, opening uh, introductory piece for the, what will be quite an extensive series of different takes on what is the shadow. And uh, again, both the individual level and the collective level, um, particularly taken by this little piece that is included in this introductory video. Uh, it's just four or five minutes long, and it's the, one of the most remarkable, compact, and clear layouts of uh, Carl Jung's uh, notion of the shadow. Now, he, you know, Carl Jung wrote thousands and thousands of pages and, uh, and just had an extraordinary uh, sector of his work devoted to the exploration of the shadow. And here in four to five minutes, they make it, it entirely understandable and relatable and with a few uh, just everyday life examples of the individual level of shadow. So in just a moment, I'll stop talking and I'll put that on. And I, uh, I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. We will be exploring some of the traditional um, kind of cornerstone uh, details of shadow dynamics from Carl Jung's perspective. There'll be experiential uh, exercises in and uh, processes that we can avail ourselves of in each of the segments that'll make up this shadow focused course. Um, I'm also excited to um, bring in other types of or interpretations of shadow. Um, for instance, at the collective level, uh, there's Watiko or Wendigo. Uh, which is uh, indigenous um, Turtle Island, or what's known now as America, um, the American continent. Um, there were a number of uh, tribes that that uh, made a point of of detailing and articulating this uh, white man's plague or white man's sickness, and so we'll be spending quite a bit of time with that. We'll also be talking about. A number of different ways of approaching doing shadow work. Um, if again, from the Jungian perspective, this can be a years long, lifelong exploration. And certainly for those who are uh, up for that depth of process, go for it. And <laughs> that won't be our, our uh, focus, main focus here in this series, this course. 
we will be talking about a number of uh, much more uh, fast acting and fast processing, you know, by in relative terms, you know, it's still going to take time and it's still going to take a depth of, of, of inner work and inner articulation and integration in a person's experience. Um, and one of the most um, gentle I, of the ways of exploring personal shadow dynamics is uh, internal family systems. We'll be uh, really putting a, a tremendous amount of focus on that, both um, the, the speaking about it and learning about it, but also experiencing it. We'll be uh, putting together a, a number of different um, actual process events that uh, people will be able to sign up for and do and and then be able to refer to the recordings later for the ma learning material in those sessions. So I, I hope you will join us and, and uh, join us in the curating and the collecting of these various processes and courses and classes and um, seminar in environments in which we're going to do this exploration together and uh, mostly that'll be in 2023 so uh, we'll be putting this this stuff together uh to together as an ensemble and uh, really looking forward to that process and hearing what each person will bring from their own perspective so again uh here's that very brief overview of carl jung's uh, take on shadow work uh, again at the individual level bear with me if i'm you know really just affectionate of uh, toward this this brief clip uh, this brief overview it is of course not a complete uh picture of uh, carl jung's or anybody else's take on shadow work but it is a lovely brief overview um, I really look forward to meeting each of you and hearing whatever you can bring to this curation process as we put this all together. Thank you. Most people are afraid to fully be themselves. They're afraid to embrace the parts of themselves that might be regarded as unacceptable because embracing these unacceptable parts makes them feel uncomfortable. So to escape this uncomfortableness, they divide themselves into two halves, conscious and unconscious. In the conscious half, they construct an ideal image of themselves, an image formed out of the bits and pieces of their past that they deem as good and acceptable. And as a result, in the unconscious half, they repress the parts of themselves that they view as bad and unacceptable. In Jungian psychology, this repressed part of the personality is called the shadow. And unless the shadows integrated into the personality, a person can never reach their fullest potential. Instead, one will always remain incomplete, fractured, and partial, living a life of regret rather than the full life that could have been. Imagine, for example, that I've solved a few equations and convinced myself that I'm a great mathematician. I might meet a few friends and they tell me that they have a math club. They gather every weekend and try to have a crack at math's most difficult problems. This scares me because if I join, I'll no longer get to be the great mathematician that I've convinced myself I am. Instead, I'll be a concrete person with actual strengths and weaknesses. And in this scenario, there are two possible actions I can take. The first action is to run from my shadow and let it grow. I refuse to join the math club and realize my own weaknesses as a mathematician. I get to cling to the ideal image of myself as a great mathematician, but as a result, I lose the opportunity to actually become one. The second action is to come into contact with my shadow and integrate it. I join the math club and realize that I'm not the great mathematician that I thought I was. In the short term, this hurts. I discover that I'm not very good at geometry, but also that I excel in differential equations. I become measured with my colleagues. I have an actual place and rank among other mathematicians. In reality, I realize I'm not the great mathematician I thought I was, but now I open up the possibility of actually becoming one. I can actually improve my skills and rank. 
in the long run, this ends up being the best decision I've ever made. See, in a way, we often prefer to be pure potential. We convince ourselves we could be whatever we want to be, but don't actively work to actually be something. We just comfort ourselves with the idea that we could be something if we wanted to. This is because when we work towards something, we start feeling our weight in the world. We're measured and ranked. We're quantified and actual. And this actual reality is often less pleasurable to live in than our ideal fantasy. But it's real, not a fantasy. And reality can be improved. But a life of fantasy always ends in tragedy. The path to self-improvement starts with self-acceptance. Only by embracing and integrating our shadow, by accepting the ugly parts of ourselves, by becoming who we're afraid to be, can we reach our fullest potential. But if we reject our shadow, if we pick and choose the parts of our past, personality, and behavior that we like, and repress the parts of ourselves we fear, we become incomplete and partial. And instead of living a full, whole life, we live one full of regrets. But it's up to you to decide. In Jungian terms, will you embrace your shadow or reject it? Would you rather fail in actuality or succeed in mere hypotheticals? Living Resilience exists to offer transformative support and resources to the collapse aware and collapse acceptant communities around the world. Our sole purpose is to curate and offer coaching, support groups, courses, and events that assist people in expanding their core skills, competencies, and capacities for facing a troubled, predicament-laden, yet still ineffably miraculous world.